Uh, so hello everybody. <laughs> um, um, yes, uh, one um, one of the most intriguing and intricate encounters between European and Japanese history is, in my view, the philosophical reception of nihilism in Japan in light of the ancient familiarity with nothingness rooted in Japanese sensibility and thought. Um, my inquiry for the sixth um, conference of the NOJP places itself in the framework of a global philosophizing and aims to address some counter influences between European and Japanese thought on the topic of nihilism in the work of Friedrich Nietzsche and Nishitani Keiji. Historical, the concept of nihilism dates to the end of the 18th century in Germany as contrasting currents of thought against Kant's postulates and um, hypothetization of the subject. The word nihilist was used polemically and pejoratively toward the representatives of this current of thought as embodying critical and destructive attitudes. Nietzsche explicitly refers to Jorgenev and the Russian nihilist, saying that it were as it's somewhere a new explosive is being tried, a dynamite of the spirit, perhaps a newly discovered Russian nihilin, a pessimism born of voluntatis, which not only says no, once no, but terrible to think, no does. Nietzsche here offers two important insights about the original nihilistic attitude. First, a nihilistic approach, of course, is certain negation that implies an engagement with nothingness, since, as Nishitani writes, it is precisely the consciousness of this nothingness and it, uh, this meaninglessness that allow nihilism to come about. Second, Nihilism grows out of a particular action, namely a particular handling of the world and with the world. For Nishitani, Nietzsche is the first philosopher who decisively contributed to the fulfillment of nihilism, not only by carrying out a clear analysis of it, but also by undertaking a counter movement against it. Um, through Nietzsche's analysis, uh, Nishitani distinguished various forms of nihilism that alternates and overlap over time. We can divide them into three, the immediate, the European, and a fulfilled uh, or self-conscious nihilism. First of all, there is an immediate nihilism, form, um, a form of nihilism that uh, comes directly from human life and is basically inseparable from it. This nihilism is related to the finitude of life in general and directed above all to the confrontation with that. To overcome uh, the restlessness and um, dissatisfaction caused by the meaningless uh, of uh, life, human beings naturally invented different antidotes in the form of all kinds of values that uh, makes life bearable, like God, family, study, politics, or simply the pleasure, the pleasure um, uh, of food and drink. In Europe, according to Nietzsche, Christian morality has so far offered the strongest resistance to immediate nihilism. However, contrary to Christianity's effectiveness, it has also led to the seed, uh, the seed um, for another form of European nihilism to develop because it has mortified fundamental aspects of life, such as pleasure and freedom. Due to time constraints, I uh, will refrain here for, from fully exploring the relation between nihilism and Christianity, which we all may already know from Nietzsche's work. Important is that uh, through the consciousness that Christianity is not only new, um, an answer, uh, is only an answer to an initial question about finitude and death, European nihilism reached its peak and the radical form of nihilism breaks out from it as it then the absolute unsustainability of the existence of all higher values of a beyond and of an itself. Because this uh, radical nihilism implies a very high form of reflection on oneself and on the world, it opens the doors to a new kind of nihilism. 
an engagement with nihilism requires a great commitment of self-consciousness. And this is ultimately where the paths of Nietzsche and Nishitani diverge. We can call Nietzsche's solution to nihilism and Hyperborean nihilism to distinguish it from Nishitani's empty nihilism. Um, and Nietzsche's proposal to return to the world of life goes through his notion of the will to power. If Christianity say no to life and desire, Nietzsche claims that one must now answer yes in defiant response. If Christianity says real life, God, beatitude to cover over nothingness, the moment has come simply to shout nothing. Accordingly, this procedure, this procedure would allow us to further to reevaluate all values. For Heidegger, who is an important influence for Nishikani, Nietzsche's response to radical nihilism remains inscribed in a strong dualism in which the will to power seems to be only the sub subjectivistic expression of an old Cartesian, not to mention the problematic of such hyper-voluntary identity. In Nishitani's interpretation of Zarathustra, for example, the prophet's teaching does not represent a dialectical creative affirmation of life. Rather, this non-dual negation of the word shows deeper connections with Buddhist teaching, from which Nishitani develops what he calls the standpoint of emptiness, Kuna Pachipa. I sketch uh, soon something about this. And this point should um, have become clear that uh, cultural and historical factors, as well, um, are, as well as their interconnections, are very significant for the development of a particular form of nihilism. What is true for the emergence of nihilism is, in turn, true for the antidote against the most sinister of all guests. Inevitably, it should be noted that Nietzsche's reception in Japan took place during the Meiji period, a time of particularly strong contradictions and controversies for the country, during which Japanese people vacillated between admiration and rejection of Western culture as foreign and invasive. While Nietzsche was perceived as one of the greatest proponents of the West's individualism and spirit of critique. So Japan, in effect, faced a dual crisis at once, local and imported. Second World War puts um, an abrupt end to Japan's process of transformation and takes European nihilism and the crisis on which it is based to its extreme consequences. Shitani uses the treatise on nihilism to exercise a sharp critique of its contemporary society of Japanese culture in general, and above all of the country's um, hasty and uncritical Europeanization. Our culture is a recent branch of European culture, Ishtan remarks, and our thinking is a shadow of the European style of thinking. European radical nihilism, as proclaimed by Nietzsche and explored by Nishitani, in fact, presuppose a certain, a certain approach to the world, to being and to nothingness that in Jap the Japanese would first have to learn in order to experience the demise of that approach in the first place. For these reasons, Nishitani writes, it seems that nihilism can by no means become a decisive issue for, issue for us, namely the Japanese. Upon the collapse of which values could Japanese nihilism be founded if Japan remains in some way estranged from the cultural values whose collapse produced the European nihilism? Nonetheless, Nishitani explained um, until the middle of the Meiji period, a spiritual foundation and highly developed tradition were still alive in the heart of the people. But in the course of Europeanization and Americanization, the spiritual core began to dissolve in successive generations to the point that it has now become a wide open vacuum in our reason. In this context, um, according to the Shitani, the hopeless situation of the Japanese was due to the fact that they could not recognize their own crisis 
not even think of modernization in terms of a crisis. And consequently, they could not deal with the westernizing modernization in a self-critical way. Nevertheless, this um, dual crisis provided them with the opportunity to engage more critically with both they own ancient tradition and the rest of the world. The study, in fact, notes uh, two main meanings of uh, nihilism for the Japanese. Nihilism teaches us first to recognize the crisis that is going through European civilization right now, that is also our crisis in our westernization as well. And uh, to accept and to be interested in the analysis of the crisis that have been worked out by the greatest thinker in Europe and in therefore to overcome the modern era. Secondly, European nihilism teaches us to return to our forgotten identity and to reflect on Eastern tradition and culture. Much like uh, Nietzsche's relation to classical Greece, Ishitani consciously reached back to the Buddhist tradition of Japan, but without boring himself in it, since he claims there is no going back to the way things used to be. What is needed is a renewal of tradition and not a nostalgic anti historical remembrance of it. Between the European and Japanese confrontation with nihilism, what is compelling is how negativity of nothingness and emptiness, which had long been familiar and even indispensable to Buddhist influence the culture of Japan, was something that shook the foundation of European culture as an annihilating counterforce to the fulfilledness, to the fullness of being. Then, what should be so problematic and frightening from a Japanese perspective about the fundamental emptiness of the world and its inhabitants? Shidani tries to show how, for human beings, the pursuit of freedom and true subjectivity involves the true standpoint of emptiness and the self-overcoming of nihilism. He notes that um, the decisive standpoint of emptiness is not unique to Buddhism or to the East, since it is also present in uh, works by thinkers such as Master Eckhart. Ishtani therefore urges that uh, we not simply divide the world into two huge blocks, the West and the East. The peculiarity of Nishitani's approach to nihilism can be rightly traced in two main conditions, his hermeneutical distance to, nihil, um, to the European metaphysical tradition on the one hand, and his deep knowledge of Mahayama Buddhism on the other. It is precisely for these reasons that an extraordinary engagement with the legacy of Nietzsche and with the problem of nihilism arises in Nishitani's philosophy, allowing us to reflect critically on the heritage and counter influences of the European practice of philosophizing. I would like to point out three main features that uh, distinguish the attained standpoint of emptiness from a perspective that um, considers negativity to be destructive and unrelating. There are the absolutely contradictory self-reference, the negation, and the relationality. Since I only have a few minutes uh, left, I will only sketch something about the three features in order to can briefly elaborate on the transplantation of nihilism in Japanese soil. As far as its uh, relation with being is concerned, the negativity of nothingness can be conceived at least uh, in um, two different ways. And of nothingness, which keep distance from being and thus oppose it negatively, and namely as non-being, Romu, and an um, emptiness, who, namely a uh, nothingness that belongs to being and in order to remain properly negative also remains in the total nothing. Emptiness is originally self empty, Nishtani claims. The uh, reference of nothingness to being, the is of emptiness, is uh, thus 
proves to be a self-reference and self-identity of being itself. With the shift to the concept of uh, negativity, in the concept of negativity from of positivity to emptiness, the negating power of negativity transforms accordingly. It does not negate anything in particular, rather empties itself. Before the negative power of emptiness unfolds more in the direction of transcendence of itself than in the direction of annihilation and destruction. In shifting the power of negation, uh, we notice how the path of Nishtani and Nietzsche definitely diverge. If for Nietzsche the self-overcoming of nihilism correspond to the attempt to say yes to everything, then for Nishtani, on the other end, the self-overcoming of nihilism means coming back to the initial question of nihilism about finitude and death by questioning or better by emptying the expectation of an answer to nihilism or of a substantial manifestation of the self. The um, emptying transcendence of the self revealed the non-dual relationality of all things, NG, and um, the insubstantiality of the self, Muga. To describe the interwoven speciality of relations between being and nothingness, Nishitani draws even more deeply um, on the Japanese spiritual tradition. He quotes the most famous sentences from the Heart Sutra and further explains this mode of relation through uh, Japanese Buddhist terminology such as soku and self-contradictory images such as those of fire and waves. With Nietzsche's uh, differentiation of nihilism and its elaboration in Japan through Nishitani's thought, we can see how this European phenomenon was transplanted onto Japanese soil, thereby generating reactions, counter interpretation and counter influence. From my analysis, we can ask whether the Japanese, to use an expression of Nishitani, have no sense of nihilism in the, in the European form, and for certain historical and cultural reason, cannot have it. Or if uh, there is in fact a much deeper and more original form of nihilism uh, to be found in Japanese thought and sensibility. Concluding, I would like to address only some aspect of these two possible answers to, um, to questions, which will probably occupy us more and more in the years to come in light of our philosophizing in our global perspective. From a Buddhistic uh, perspective, it does not make sense to speak of nihilism as a particular doctrine only because the core of nihilism revolves around the experience of nothingness. Thus, no terms equivalent to nihilism appears in Buddhist writing as far as I know. As Nishitani notes, the Japanese will never be able to incorporate the millennia of history that led to Nietzscheanian nihilism into their own culture, because such a transplantation would not take roots in sterilized soul, like some sort of tabula rasa, but instead in uh, and on a um, historical ground. That means that there will always be differences at play that will hybridize the grass process and cause a chain reaction or cross pollination in both direction, eastwards and westward. Since neither of these are airtight compartments of the world. The remoteness of the concept of nihilism from the history of Japan does not lead then to the total incomprehensibility of this phenomenon, even from a more or less Buddhist heritage. It doesn't matter if the Japanese never had form, uh, not even an immediate one of nihilism, until they discovered the concept in a foreign land and a foreign language. They were naturally forced to come to terms with it in the moment they came into contact with it and with all European culture. 
One example of this confrontation with the foreign concept of nihilism could be the translation of the word itself. Uh, nihilism is transliterated in katakana as nihilismo, namely um, with the character of the alphabet assigned to foreign words and not trying to find a more properly Japanese transliteration, transliteration in uh, Chinese character as in the case of the word philosophy. And even if the I just, term... I just, I just would like to, to inform you that soon it would be would be important to uh, get to a conclusion. Thank you. Yes, yes, thanks. <laughs> I'm concluding. Um, so, hence, even if the uh, term is for all intent and purpose part of the Japanese uh, philosophical vocabulary, it maintains a certain distance from a more properly Japanese accordance of the translation. Second possibility, uh, what solution would be that a form of a nihilism, even if under another name, has been long present in Japanese culture and thus, in one same, anticipated um, the European form before its official reception in Japan. Looking for a form of nihilism within the uh, Buddhist doctrine might mean, however, that we interpret something in Japanese art purely through European categories thus retroactively rewrite the history of Japanese thought. Consider also the most negative and pejorative connotation of the term in Europe, the articulation of the concept solely thought European, uh, through European categories would potentially devaluate the Japanese version through the parameters of another one. Will Japanese thought of a markedly Buddhist nature have um, to defend itself forever from European charge of nihilism? Will the European nihilism allow itself to be modified uh, both in its development and in its history by non-dual and relational impulse? Many of these questions, in fact, like behind global entanglement that have already occurred interpretation of this entanglement, however, begin their flight at nightfall, like Hegel's All of Minerva, and um, Nietzsche and Nishitani and the thinker after them were and are already at work on the different narratives of philosophies, their entanglement and the methodological choices that cannot be escaped from philosophizing in a global perspective. Thanks for listening.